All right, and welcome to the Unit 2 Test Review Part 1. Now guys, y'all should have tried these first five problems first, and now you're looking at this video only for the problems that you don't understand. Let's take a look at number one. We have this 5b minus 3, and wait a second, that minus 3 is outside a parentheses. So let's drop our 5b and say, you know what, what is negative 3 times negative 7? Well, we know we have a negative times a negative, which is a positive, and of course, 3 times 7, which will give us 21b. We have negative 3 times positive 1, which will be negative 3, is equal to 20. And from here, let's finish simplifying by combining our like terms. We know 5b plus 21b will be 26b minus 3 is equal to 20. From here, we can add our constant. We can go plus 3 on both sides. And we get 26b is equal to 23. Now at this point, all of y'all know we should always divide by our coefficient. And here we are left over with this. b is equal to 23 over 26. All right, let's go ahead and move on to our second problem. Okay, for problem number two, we have a three by three system of equations. Now guys, I'm not gonna lie, this is the one that a lot of students have been cheating on using photo math. Guys, watch this example, see how I work it out, these will get easier, but only if you're taking the time to work them out by hand. Okay, so let's take a look here. I see that there's a negative one as a coefficient right there. And so that means like, you know what, I want to use this equation because it will be the easiest equation, hands down, to cancel out my other uh, two x variables. Okay, so I'm going to write it out twice. Negative x, negative x minus 4y plus 2z is equal to 2. Now recall, I'm going to take my middle equation, I'll write it in a different color, you can write it right there, 3x plus 2y plus 5z is equal to 4. In my third equation, oh, I'm sorry, my third equation, let's go ahead and use this nice purple. So we have 2x plus 4y minus z is equal to 0. And maybe it's more of a pink, who knows. Now as I look right here, I know I want to cancel out a positive 3x and ask yourself, what gets rid of a positive 3x? And you know that that's negative 3x. So since this is a negative 1, we have to multiply this by positive 3. And what is this going to look like once I distribute? Well, 3 times negative x is negative 3x. 3 times negative 4y will give us negative 12y. And 3 times 2z will give us 6z. Of course, 3 times 2 will give us 6. Now, what happened here? Well, my x is eliminated. 3x minus 3x is 0. And 2y minus 12y will give us negative 10y. Oh, let's make that very clearly 10 plus 5 plus 6 will give us 11z is equal to 10. And over here on the right side, well, over here on the right side, we know that in order to cancel out a positive 2x, we need to have a negative 2x. So let's multiply this top line by 2. Okay, and 2 times negative x will give us negative 2x. 2 times negative 4y will give us negative 8y. 2 times 2z will, of course, give us 4z and 2 times 2 will give us 4. Well, what happens whenever things eliminate? I know 2x minus 2x is a zero pair. And let's see, 4y minus 8y will, of course, give us negative 4y. And negative z plus 4z will give us 3z is equal to 4. All right. Well, now I have my two 2 by 2 systems. I would encourage you to pause the video. Uh, finish taking your notes, and let's clear this up so we can move on to the second part of the problem. Okay, so now that's all cleaned up, what I want to do is I want to take a look at my y values. I want to take a look at that negative 10 and that negative 4. Now, there's no number I can multiply 4 by to get to 10. But one thing we can do is we can say, what is the LCM? What is the LCM of 10 and 4? Now, what's my trick? My trick is I want you to take the largest number, 10, and let's start listing out its multiples until we hit one that's a multiple of 4. So 10, 20, 30. Well, wait a second. Can't 4 go into 20? Yeah, absolutely. So we're going to say this. The LCM of 4 and 10 is 20. And we're going to multiply these lines accordingly to get them to 20. 
I know that negative 10 times 2 will turn into negative 20. And here, this negative 4, I need to multiply by 5. But notice these both have the same signs. So let's change the sign of one of them. Okay, when I distribute this 2, I get negative 20y. And 2 times 11z will give me, of course, plus 22z is equal to. And 2 times 10 will give me 20. And how about here on the bottom? And it's purple. Well, negative 5 times negative 4 will give me positive 20y. And negative 5 times 3z will give me negative 15z. And negative 5 times 4 will, of course, give me negative 20. Well, something interesting happens here. Negative 20y plus 20y zeroes out. We know that 22z minus 15z is actually 7z. But wait a second, what is 20 minus 20? Well, that zeroes out as well, and we're left with 7z equals 0. Let's divide both sides by 7, and we'll get this. We will now get z is equal to 0. Now, guys, once you have that, the rest of this problem is so, so easy. All right, so for example, we go back here to our 2 by 2 system. And now let's go ahead and take this one in purple. We'll say, you know what, we have negative 4y plus 3z is equal to 4. And I'll just go ahead and put z in this nice blue, which is 3. Well, guys, 3 times 0 is 0. There's nothing there. So what are we really saying? You know, let's move forward in blue as well. We're saying that negative 4y is equal to 4. And once I divide both sides by negative 4, well, I get the second answer of 4 divided by negative 4, y is equal to negative 1. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at our final part of this problem. We now want to go ahead <clears throat> and choose any one of these. I'll choose that top equation. Let's write it out plugging in everything we know. We can say negative x, I'm sorry, negative x minus 4y plus 2z is equal to 2. Now let's go ahead and plug in our z, which was uh, 0. And let's plug in our y, which was negative 1. And from here we can solve out the equation. We have negative x, negative 4 times negative 1. Remember, that's a negative. Negative 4 times negative 1 would be positive 4. That zeroes out is equal to 2. Well, we subtract both sides by 4. And we get negative x is equal to negative 2. And guys, once I divide both sides by negative 1, well, I get this, x is equal to positive 2. And now we have enough information to actually write out the answer. We'll say this, we'll say y is negative 1, oh, I'm sorry. We'll say that x, my apologies guys, we'll say that x here is 2, we'll say that y is negative 1, and we'll say our z value is 0. And there's our answer, 2 comma negative 1 comma 0. Okay, after that beast of a problem, let's go to number three, which is super, super easy. Write an inequality to represent, or yeah, write an inequality to represent the graph below. Well, guys, let's, let's talk about how simple this is. We know our y-intercept is one, b equals one, and our m, our slope, let's see, our delta y over our delta x. If I go down this line, I see my next point is right here. Well, I know that my change in y, we went up to, we went to the right one, two, three. I now have enough information. We can say this. Y is something two-thirds X. Oh, I'm sorry. Y is something two-thirds X minus one. And right here, oh, guys, guys I'm shooting a video. Miss Ladd, I'm shooting a video. And then we have this dotted line, which is going to be our less than symbol, I'm sorry, we have this dotted line, which we know that's not going to be less than or equal to, but it's shaded above, so we can write greater than. All right, guys, sorry about that one. And so we have this, y is greater than 2 thirds x minus 1. Okay, number 4 is going to be super quick and easy. What is f of 0 on the graph below? Well, guys, remember, this is always just saying what is f of x, and here we're saying that x is equal to 0 when we plug it in. So y'all go here to your x-axis, to 0, and you literally just go up to this line, and whatever height you're at, or whatever y value you're at, that is your answer. So it would say f of 0 is equal to 1. And guys, y'all just going to type in 1 for
for your answer. All right, let's move on to our fifth and final example. Okay, here's our fifth and final example. We want to solve the system of equations below. We got y equals negative 8 parentheses 2x minus 1 and 6x minus y equals 14. Now guys, notice this falls squarely under the category of having a single variable by itself. A variable by itself. So if we have a variable by itself, we know that we are going to use substitution. Okay, let's go ahead and clean this up just a little bit. If I were to ask you, what is negative 8 times 2x? Well, you would say negative 16x, and negative 8 times negative 1 would be positive 8. Now guys, from here, check this out. We are now going to take that and plug that into our y value. So what's this going to look like? Let me write this bottom equation in this nice orange. And we can say 6x minus our y value is equal to 14. And here we have what is y? y is negative 16x plus 8. Well, this is really negative 1. So we're going to say 6x, negative 1 times negative 16x will be positive 16x. Negative 1 times 8 will be negative 8 is equal to 14. And of course, guys, once we combine those, 6x plus 16x will be 22x. We can add 8 to both sides, and that would be 22. And guys, once we divide both sides by 22, x is equal to 1. Now remember, that's not quite good enough. We have to finish out the problem. So let's go ahead and take that original. Let's take that negative 16, let's say y equals negative 16x plus 8. And let's go ahead and plug that in right there where x is 1. And we can say, okay, well, y is equal to negative 16 plus 8, and y is equal to negative 8. So our answer is going to be 1, negative 8. All right, thank you all so much, and I'll see you guys in our next video.